Hello everyone. Today we're going to construct the variations of the frequency distribution table. So the first variation that we're going to make is the relative frequency. So the relative frequency is just the ratio between the frequency of the class interval over the total number of observations. So for the first class interval, the relative frequency is 3 divided by 50. So that would give us value of 0 0.06. And then 6 divided by 50 is 0.12. Then 10 divided by 50 is 0 0.2. 12 divided by 50 is 0 0.24. 8 divided by 50 is 0.16. 7 divided by 50 is 0.14 and 4 divided by 50 is 0 0.08. So this is the relative frequency. Now the total, total of the relative frequencies, if you are going to add this, this should be equal to 1. So the total is 1. But sometimes the total relative frequency is not equal to 1 because we tend to round this off to the nearest 100. So don't worry if it's not really equal to 1. Now, another variation is the relative frequency percentage. So the relative frequency percentage is just the relative frequency multiplied by 100. So it becomes a percentage. So 0 0.06 times 100 is 6%. So no need to write percent, but if you want, you can. So point. 12 times 100 is 12. So 0 0.2 times 100 is 20%. Then 0 0.24 times 100 is 24%. So this is 16%. Then 14%. Then this is 8%. So giving us a total of a hundred percent. So these are the relative frequency, which is just the ratio between the frequency of the class interval and the total number of observations in the distribution. So you just divide the class frequency by the total to get the relative frequency. And to get the relative frequency percentage, you just multiply the relative frequency by 100%. So 6 plus 12 plus 20 plus 24 plus 16 plus 14 plus 8 is 100. So that's 100%. So continuing with the variations of the frequency distribution table, we can also construct the less than cumulative frequency and the greater than cumulative frequency of uh, distributions of our data set. So to construct the less than cumulative frequency, which just counts the number of observations um, less than a given upper class boundary. So again, the less than cumulative frequency counts the number of observations less than an upper class boundary. So we need to know the class boundaries of this distribution. So these are the class boundaries. 
to or the true class limits. So for the first one, first class interval, the number of observations that fall within this interval is three. So the number of observations less than 12.5 is three. Okay, since there are three observations from 10 to 12. Now, for the next class interval, there are six more observations. So the number of observations less than this upper class boundary, 15.5, is just three plus six. Since there are three observations that fall within 10 to 12 and six observations that fall within the interval 13 to 15. So we have nine. So that's why it's cumulative because we just add the frequencies. The number of observations less than 18.5 will be 3 plus 6 plus 10, which is just 19. And then, we just add 12, so this is 31. And then, plus 8, this becomes 39. Then plus 7, this becomes 46. And plus 4 becomes 50. So this is your less than cumulative frequency distribution. Now, the greater than cumulative frequency distribution counts the number of observations in the interval greater than the lower class boundary so greater than so here since we're going to ask how many observations are greater than 9.5 this obviously should be 50 since your observations are from 10 to 30 but it's best to start with the highest interval so how many observations are greater than 27.5? Since these observations, four observations, are from 28 to 30, then there must be four observations greater than 27.5. And then, how many observations are greater than 24.5? So since there, there are seven more observations that are from 25 to 24, then it's just the sum of 7 and 4. So it's 11. So the number of observations greater than 21.5 would be all the observations from 22 to 30. So plus 8, this becomes 19. Then how many are greater than 18.5? It would be 12 plus 8 plus 7 plus 4. So 19 plus 12 is just 31. And then the number of observations greater than 15.5 would be 41 since we add 10 to 31. And then 41 plus 6 becomes 47. And 47 plus 3 is 50. So this is your greater than cumulative frequency.